Hello, and thank you for viewing this video demonstrating an example Sologic root cause analysis using CauseLink. My name is Brian Hughes, and I am a root cause analysis instructor and investigator with Sologic. In this video, we are going to review a root cause analysis of a near miss event using CauseLink. CauseLink is our browser based root cause analysis application. If you aren't familiar with the term root cause analysis, just think of it as structured problem solving. The Sologic methodology is applicable to many types of problems. The purpose of this video is to provide you with an example you can use as a reference. You can download this and other examples from our website www.sologic.com. Just click on Resources and then RCA Templates and Examples. This video is going to examine a near-miss event. Near-miss events are characterized as having limited actual impact but high potential impact. Analyzing near-miss events can be very useful because many of the causes are the same as if an event with a worse outcome were to have occurred. The event we are going to analyze occurred when a construction worker was smoking a cigarette near active gas pumps. I noticed this when I was getting fuel one morning before work. The store part of the gas station was fenced off for a remodel job, but the gas pumps were left operational. As I was fueling up, I noticed a group of three workers walking around behind the fence. One of them was smoking a cigarette. At one point, he was approximately six feet away from the active gas pump. He could have potentially been as close as three feet. But that was the end of the story. Nothing bad happened. We all just went on with our day. But maybe something bad could have happened. We'll never know. Is this something that we should look at more closely? Or should we just ignore it? A near-miss root cause analysis is initiated by one or more risk-based triggers. This is in contrast to event-based triggers. Event-based triggers require that an actual adverse event occur before an RCA is performed. But risk-based triggers instead focus on what could have occurred, how likely it is to occur in the future, and how bad it could be if it does happen. We use a risk matrix to help determine a risk score for the event. Events that score higher than the trigger require an RCA. A risk matrix plots probability and severity as XY coordinates. The version I'm showing you uses five different levels for each. There are different types of risk matrices, and I'd encourage you to do a little research to choose the type that's right for you. The National Patient Safety Foundation recently released a document called RCA Squared. This document calls on healthcare organizations to move towards risk-based triggers. A mature RCA program in any organization, regardless of industry, would benefit from such a move. Let's start by applying a risk score to the gas station event by estimating the probability of recurrence. Smoking is an addictive activity and therefore smokers smoke compulsively throughout the day. The likelihood that this worker will smoke multiple times per day is relatively high. Will he smoke near the fuel pumps, though? That's a harder question because it requires us to guess as to this smoker's individual perception of risk. If he has a history of smoking near gas pumps, every successful time can actually reinforce in his mind that the activity is low risk. We tend to build up a false sense of security when nothing bad happens because we falsely assume that nothing bad can or will happen in the future. Past performance does not predict future results, at least not always. So let's err towards the side of caution. If nothing changes, let's assume that he will likely smoke near the fuel pumps again in the future. 
While it's likely that he will smoke near the fuel pump again, it remains relatively unlikely that smoking near the fuel pump will lead to a fire or explosion. The lower explosion concentration limit of gasoline is about 1.4%, and the upper is around 7.6%. Any less, and the fuel-to-oxygen mix will be too lean, and any more, it will be too rich for an explosion. So a lot of things have to line up just so in order for the right conditions to exist for a gasoline fire or explosion. That said, the more often the event occurs, the more likely it is for just the right conditions to arise. So for the purpose of this event, let's score it as somewhat likely. A National Fire Protection Agency report examining data on service station fires in the USA between 2004 and 2008 states that smoking materials were the most common source of ignition in outside fires at service stations. They occurred in 21% of fires documented. Unclassified hot or smoldering objects accounted for another 10%, and hot embers or ash accounted for yet another 10% of fires. And finally, cigarette lighters were responsible for 3%. Based on this evidence, I feel comfortable with the somewhat likely probability score. Next, let's estimate severity. In estimating severity, we are estimating the potential magnitude of an event if it were to occur. If a fire or explosion occurred in this gas station, the severity would range from high to extreme. It could lead to multiple fatalities and or injuries. There would also be substantial property loss, as well as lost revenues and potential civil and criminal penalties. So it's up there towards the top. Let's score it as extreme. So based on my chart and assessment, this near-miss event would earn a score of 22 out of 25. Would you have scored it differently? Plotting a risk score may seem objective, but it's actually pretty subjective. More experienced participants will come up with more accurate answers. But even with experts, we have to be careful because a different group may score it differently than us. Consistency in scoring is more important than accuracy. This is because consistent scoring leads to more reliable predictions. You can set up Coslink's severity tag on the overview screen to match your risk matrix. I'll select high from the pull-down list since it corresponds to my assessment of this event. You can also log the risk score in the impact section of the problem statement. Scoring risk helps you create a common impact denominator between events. From an RCA program management standpoint, you can tell if your program is getting better if your risk scores are trending downward and to the left over time. Let's take a look at the problem statement. Notice that our focal point states that this event is considered to be a near miss. We want to call this out overtly so that people know that we are trying to prevent a more impactful problem in the future. We need to log the when and where info so we can identify patterns and trends. For instance, what if you found problems occurring in a similar time range or at a common location? This kind of data will allow you to focus on specific problem areas to bring things back under control. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this event had very little actual impact. But the potential impact is high. A near-miss event can be characterized by this gap between little to no actual impact and high to severe potential impact. Note that the values I listed for potential losses are estimates. Let's move on to the cause and effect chart. This cause and effect chart starts out with the focal point and immediately branches off in two directions, one showing the potential fire and explosion, or what could have happened, and the other describing how people could potentially be in proximity to any fire or explosion. Setting the problem up this way allows us to focus both on reducing the risk of fire and explosion 
and also on how we can limit the exposure to people. The potential for fire and or explosion follows the classic fire model. There is oxygen from the atmosphere, a fuel source from the gasoline vapors, and potential ignition sources pertaining to smoking. The ignition source needs to be close enough to a source of fuel to actually start a fire. The fuel could come from gasoline vapors escaping from a fuel tank during the normal fueling process or from a spill to the ground. The ignition source proximity is the result of how they set up the barrier fence. They closed off the innermost bays, but left the outside part of those pumps available. And that's where the greatest risk of contact exists. The workers could get as close as six inches away from the fuel source, and it is in the realm of possibility that a fuel spill could encroach on the protected area. There are several possible solutions that will help mitigate risk. First off, if there's a policy against smoking on the job and this worker is in direct violation, disciplinary action up to and including termination could be appropriate. Now, if you've been to a Sologic class, you know that we consider disciplinary action to be a red flag because it is overused and often not effective. But in this case, if it's determined that there is a clear policy against smoking on the job, the worker was aware of this policy and violated it willfully, then punitive action would be appropriate, perhaps also for the other two guys he was working with. Be careful, though. Near-miss analysis depends on people reporting near-misses. If you hammer them when they screw up and report it, you'll likely drive these kinds of events underground. No one is going to report an event if it leads to punishment for themselves or those they have to work with. We'll discuss human error and disciplinary action in a future video. The thing is, even if disciplinary action is appropriate, we still need to explore options that reduce risk through a combination of engineering controls, substitution, or elimination. One option would be to close down the pumps. We could simply close off the pumps during construction. This eliminates potential fuel sources, but it also increases the cost of the job because the station would lose out on revenue. Moving the barrier fence is another option. The barrier could be extended out beyond the pumps. This would provide for a larger buffer. We could set up a designated smoking area. In the setup of the job, we could anticipate that some workers may be smokers and accommodate their needs in a safe way. There is room at the back of the site for a safe smoking area. We'd have to ensure that it was properly marked off and that people were adhering to the policy. Or we could just ban smoking from the site in any circumstance. If the workers want to smoke, they can leave the site to do so. Whatever we come up with, it's not good enough to simply reduce risk on this single job. These are lessons that can be employed at all jobs, current and future. Remember, this is a terrific opportunity to reduce risk without having to actually experience the full brunt of an actual adverse event. Treat it like the gift that it is and milk every last bit of value out of it. Near misses come up in every organization, and they always present good opportunities to reduce risk without actually experiencing adverse consequences. I hope you found this video useful. You can download this example at our website, www.sologic.com. You can view our other videos there, as well as on our Sologic YouTube channel. And as always, don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or comments. Thanks for your interest in Sologic.